Virginia Slims by Greg Carey. Place, the play takes place in the lobby of an apartment building on Long Island, New York. Time, the course of the action spans from August to December. Characters, there's Ben, a 22-year-old college student. He is in his senior year and is living in this apartment building with two roommates who are also students at his college. Phyllis, 70. She has lived in this apartment building for 10 years. She moved here because her husband died when she was 60. Scene one takes place on the front steps of the apartment building. Ben pulls out his phone and calls Bill, the super. After several rings, Uh, hi. Yes, uh, Bill. Hi. Uh, th th this is a uh, this is Benjamin Kirk in apartment one B. I'm good. Yes. Uh, thanks. <laughs> no complaints. Um, well, actually, uh, just one little thing. That's kind of why I'm why I'm calling. <laughs> um, oh, anyway, there seems to be um, a, a leak coming from our uh, kitchen ceiling, and uh, I believe my roommate Danny called you about it, and you. Oh, oh, you didn't get a call? Um, well, uh, okay, I will, I'm, I'm calling. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's in the kitchen and there's some, some water pooling, kind of like a, like a bubble and uh, the water just keeps leaking out. Well, it's, well, not like a constant flow. I would say if I were to describe it, I would say it's, it's shy, but consistent. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I, I just, I just want to make sure that the bubble's not gonna <laughs> like pop and make a bigger mess. And oh, it, 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 it won't. Um, okay. Uh, and are you completely sure about that? The lobby door opens. Phyllis walks out. Phyllis pulls out a pack of Virginia Slims and lights a cigarette while listening to Ben's conversation. Well. Okay, um, well, either way, could you just, um, uh, uh, th th could there be someone who could come and, and take a look at it and uh, fix it? Yeah, th th sooner would be better. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, call me back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm available the rest of the day, so um, just, uh, just call me when you can. Um, th that will be today though, right? Hello? Hello? Next time. Just tell him the time you want him to come. I'm sorry? Bill, he's just going to ignore you if you babble on like that. Oh. Uh, thanks. And it wouldn't kill you to hold the door for an old lady. Oh, oh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Phyllis. What? My name is Phyllis. You know, people usually ask your name when you meet them. Oh, um, <laughs> um, well, nice to meet you, Phyllis. Ben, Ben, <laughs> I'm Ben. I'm sorry. <clears throat> For what? Oh, well, just, I, I just didn't know if I was in your way or not. Um, don't you live here? Yeah. Well, then it's your stoop too. You can stand here all day if you want. <laughs> yeah. You expecting a hot date? What? You keep checking your phone. Oh, I'm... Um... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just waiting for my roommate to get back with my car. Trying to get to work. Your roommate has your car right now. Well, yes, and he said he'd be back before I had to go to work, but, well, he's still not here. Why would you give him your car if you had to work today? Well, so, so none of my roommates have cars, so we just have a little arrangement where I just keep my keys by the door so we can all use the car to get groceries or, you know, if we need to pick anything up, it just works out for everyone easiest. It works out for everyone to use your car whenever they want. Yeah. Huh. 
And how is that arrangement working for you now? Exactly. Where do you work? At Starbucks on Cherry Valley. Great. I'm on my way out for groceries. We can share my Uber. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's okay. That's, that's very nice of you, but I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. When does your shift start? 12 minutes. Oh, my God. Then you're coming with me. I don't want to hear any excuses. I'm going there anyhow. Stop and shop is right next door. Oh, and here's my Uber pulling up. The red Honda. Uh, oh, wow. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. Perfect timing. Um, I really appreciate it. <sighs> there is only one thing you need to do. Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely, anything. Call your roommate and tell him to drop your car off at Starbucks. But how is he going to get home? He's got legs, hasn't he? Yeah, but... Well, uh, then he can walk just... or call himself an Uber. I mean, come on. It's your car. It's not really your problem how he decides to get himself home. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I guess you're right. Of course I am. Now let's go, honey. Oh, shut up. You see us walking to you, for Christ's sake. End scene. Scene two, the apartment building lobby. Two doors lead to apartments 1A and 1B, a staircase leading to the floors above, and a section of the wall that is mailboxes. Phyllis walks up to the lobby door with hands full of groceries. She starts to fumble around for keys before ringing 1B. She holds the buzzer. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean for you to come to the door. I couldn't reach my keys. I was just hoping someone was home to buzz me in. Uh, that's, that's okay. Um, my buzzer has been broken since I moved in. Could you take these from me? Hands him her groceries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm over here in 1A. I just need to get my mail. Yeah, no problem. Opening her mailbox and pulling out stacks of mail. Oh, just bills and more junk. Junk! Ha! And look at this! Another phone book! Do you keep getting all these phone books too? Um, no, I actually didn't even realize there was still a thing. I swear, they send me so many damn phone books, I could pile them all on top of each other and climb to the top and commit <laughs> suicide! Oh. And you believe they're still redoing the courtyard? Yeah, I know, right? The letter said it was supposed to be done before the summer. Right, and you know what it is. It's Bill covering his ass. Those steps were horrible. I would call twice a week to complain because I was so nervous about breaking an ankle. You know, I'm an older woman, hun. I wouldn't bounce back like you and... Bill knew he was going to get sued if he didn't fix them. Well, at least he listened. Oh, Bill only listens if you complain enough. I told him for years that he needed to update the sprinkler systems in the building because, ha, huh, well, look at them. They're older than me. And what does he do? The cheap bastard buys fire extinguishers for all the lobbies. I swear he'd kill us all if he thought it'd save him a few bucks. Phyllis pulls out her keys. She gets her key to open the door, but keeps turning to Ben to keep talking. You know, I called him yesterday about the young couple upstairs. Oh, do you hear them screaming at each other every night? Oh, um, no, actually, I haven't heard them. I didn't even realize there was a younger couple. I, I've only met the woman above me in 2B, and... Well, you. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. They scream at each other all the time. They must be right above me in 2A, because all I hear about is how he keeps drinking and how much she needs a job. You know, 
I used to yell at my husband all the time, but we had a house. I could do that. Yes. And that's why I keep telling my daughter she needs to move out of her apartment and into a proper home. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She's living in Manhattan with her husband, right? Cute place. Small. It's nice, though. It's got an elevator. But she's got a kid on the way. Now, this husband of hers has more money than God, but tells her he doesn't want to leave the city because of the commute. What kind of bullshit is that? I mean, how long does it take you to get to the city from here? Um, well, that depends on which train I catch. Uh, like 35, 45 minutes, maybe. No, oh, you see, that's nothing. I keep telling her, I say, Caroline, you need to get more space to raise a family. And she says, we're fine, mom. We have the extra room. Yeah, one extra room. Where's the backyard? Where's the playroom, I say? What she needs to do is tell her husband to move out here on the island to a nice three bedroom and let me help with a baby when it comes. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds nice. Phyllis opens her door and walks in. Phyllis walks through the hallway and into another room. Well, come on in, honey, and put those down over here. Walks in and immediately gets hit with a stiff scent of cigarettes and cat litter. Um, okay, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just put them down right here. <sighs> Perfect. Thank you, honey. You were raised, right? Oh, thank you. Um, you're welcome. Anytime I can help. <laughs> well, in that case, do you mind taking that garbage out by the door? I was going to take it out on my way before, but it was too heavy for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can get that. Oh, bless you, honey. Grabs garbage bag and starts to close the door to leave. What's your favorite thing to eat, honey? I want to make you something. I make a lovely chicken parm. Oh, that, that's nice of you, but you, you don't need to cook for me. I'm, I'm just happy to help out. Oh, nonsense, honey. Next time I make it, I'll have extras for you. Well, sure. Uh, thank you. Take care, honey. Yeah, uh, you too. Ben can finally leave and close the door. Ben walks toward the lobby door to throw out the garbage. End scene. Scene three. Oh, and look at this bullshit. You've got one guy digging and four guys watching him. No wonder this is taking so long. Move it along, guys. You've been sitting on your asses long enough. Phyllis walks inside lobby and sees Ben sitting on the stairs. Imagine. Having a union job where all you have to do is watch other people work. Ha! Huh, I'd never quit. Problem with the construction, guys? Well, it's like always. I see a lot of people out there, but not seeing a lot of work being done. <laughs> and that crap they play all day. Oh, look. I don't have a problem with them listening to music while they work, but can't they at least play good music if we all have to listen to it? Well, I honestly, <laughs> I can't even hear anything past the, the jackhammer they've been using. Oh, well, they're working out on, on the sidewalk by your side. It must be right up against your window. Every morning at 7 a.m. <laughs> You have to complain more. If it bothers you, call Bill. That's what I do. I, I don't know. I, I don't really like talking to Bill. He just reminds me of a... Well, he, he just, he's just hard to talk to. Why? Because he's an asshole. Uh, well, I don't know. It, just, it was just really hard to find a place that would rent to students. So I guess I just have this fear of him kicking us out. <laughs> honey are you serious that man would never risk losing a check every month 
He works for the building, hun. If he was kicking people out, he'd get ripped apart for losing money. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I don't know. It's just sometimes I just feel like, well, because we're students, they, they just look at us like we're not supposed to be here. Well, you should get over that, honey, or he's just going to walk all over you. Yeah, I guess so. What are you doing in the lobby? Oh, I uh, forgot my keys and my roommates are both in class. Well, the lady in 2B buzzed me in. I'm just waiting for them to get back home. Oh, no, no, no. You're not waiting. Call Bill. Tell him to come unlock the door for you. No, I, it, it's, it's probably not going to be too much longer. I can wait. No, that's stupid. Call him now. But Okay, okay, yeah, I'll call. Good. Holding his phone, about to call. So how, uh, how should I phrase this? What do you mean, how should you phrase it? You just call him and tell him to unlock the door. He's got a master key, for Christ's sake. You're not asking him to perform miracles. Oh. Okay, uh, okay. Ben calls Bill after several rings. <clears throat> uh, hi, uh, hello? Uh, yes, um, this is uh, Benjamin Kirk calling from 1B. Um, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, how are you? Tell him you're locked out. Oh, uh, great, great, great. Yeah, so um, I unfortunately got myself in a little situation here. I am currently locked out of my apartment and... Um... Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. Well, yeah, my, my neighbor let me in the lobby, but I'm just not able to get into the to my apartment. Well, well, I was waiting for my roommates to get home to, to let me in, but, um, oh, well, they're in class, um, but should probably be home in like an hour or no, so. I don't... Tell him to come now and unlock the um, door. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, I, but, but you see, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure when they're coming. So uh, I, I, I was thinking, well, because you have the master key, you wouldn't mind terribly coming and letting me in? Oh, 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 oh you're not currently here. Oh, okay, yeah, well, um, I guess- No, uh, tell him to come. Ask him how long yeah. it's gonna. Okay, yeah, yeah, well, uh, I, I, I just, I just, yeah, no, I just need to get inside. Um, but, but how long will that take you to get here? Oh, 15 minutes? Oh, oh, great. Yeah, that's awesome. I can wait 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I'll see you soon. And I, I, I just want to apologize again for this <laughs> inconvenience. Uh, it's not really like me to forget my keys like this, and I'm, I'm, I'm just very sorry. Um, okay. okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, see you in a bit then. All right, bye. Ben hangs up the phone. Oh my god, that went great. <laughs> yeah, terrific. You could handle a hostage situation with your turn of phrase. Really? <laughs> no! Come on now, honey. You apologize like you just killed his dog or something. That phone call should have been two sentences. I'm locked out. Get here as soon as possible. And then you're done. What are you doing? Trying to hit a word count. Oh, I'm just, I am just—I just get a little flustered on the phone, I guess. But, well, at least he's coming. I actually had no idea what time my, my roommates were coming back. <laughs> so uh, I was ready to sit here all day. Oh, honey, don't be so accommodating. You're never going to get your way doing that. Yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> You gotta learn how to be an asshole. Well, um, well, I, I, I stopped hanging my keys uh, by the door. So now my roommates have to ask me to ask to, to use my car. So I guess I have you to thank. Well, for the advice. <laughs> You're welcome, sweetie. Now, since you've got a few minutes, can you take out the garbage for me? Oh, sure thing, Phyllis. Okay. 
Let me get my stuff. Phyllis walks over to her apartment and opens the door. Oh, I also have recycling too. Can you can take that with you as well? Yeah, of course, no problem. All right. Phyllis starts gathering her garbage. Let me get all the recycling together. All right. So here's the garbage. And here's the stuff I need to be recycled. Phyllis hands Ben a blue canvas bag filled to the brim with wine bottles. Okay. Now, this is a reusable tote bag I got with my subscription to, I don't know. I'm subscribed to so many things, but it's reusable. So don't throw it out. I want it back when you're done. Um. Yeah, just... Dump the crap in the bin downstairs and bring it back to me. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, no problem. Um, I'll, I'll just be right back. Ah, I'm going to take a nap. My head is killing me. It's that damn couple upstairs keeping me up at night again. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Ah, it's fine. I'll live. Just leave the bag on the doorknob. I'll get it later when I go out for my smoke. Uh, uh, sure, uh, whatever is easiest. Uh, I'll see you later, Phyllis. See ya, honey. And don't forget to prop that door open. Wouldn't want to get locked out again. Very sure. All right, battles. And scene. Scene four. Ben enters the lobby carrying his backpack with earphones in. Ben turns to get the mail and sees Phyllis walking toward the door. Ben holds it open for her. Oh, thank you, darling. You're just so sweet to hold the door for me. If you were wearing a suit, I'd give you a dollar. (laughs) It's no problem. Did you just get back from school? Yep, just walked in. Oh, Oh, how nice. Now... You don't go to high school, do you? Oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) I'm at Five Towns right down the road. Okay, because I was going to say, you look really young. Oh. Thanks. (laughs) See, that's how you know you're young. Because you didn't take that as a compliment. (laughs) Yeah, I I guess you're right. And what do you study in there? Oh, um, I'm an acting major. Oh, an actor, huh? You know, my daughter was an actor when she was little. You should look her up. She was very successful. Caroline Wilde, that's W-I-L-D-E. Wow, great name. Oh, thank you. You know, I was actually her manager. (laughs) I went to every audition and every day on set with her. And I would listen on every single thing the directors and producers would say. I wasn't afraid to ask any questions either. I swear I would have been the best manager, but I wouldn't have given a crap about anybody else's kid. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's amazing. well, yeah, I'm, I'm an acting major, and I'm in my senior year. What are you doing living here? On campus with everybody? Well, I was on campus my first two years, but I didn't, live, I didn't like living with somebody five feet to my right. And I have my own room here, and, you know, the best roommate you can ask for is a door. It's also really expensive to live there. So it's actually cheap for me to live here off campus and just make my own food. Are you living here on your own then? Oh, no, no, no. I, uh, it's me and my two roommates. We're all in the same class and just decided to get off campus last year. Well, that's nice for you guys. I've been here a million years. When my husband Harry passed away, I knew I couldn't and wouldn't take care of the whole house myself. So I moved here. It's small, but hey. I never have to shovel my own walkway, so I'll take it. (laughs) Um, I'm sorry to hear about your husband. Oh, it's fine, honey. Like I said a million years ago. Well, um, 
It was good. Uh, it was good talking to you, fellas. Wait, can you help me with something? You're young. You must be good with all this technology crap. Um, well, yeah, sure thing. I, I, I can help you. Whatever you need. <laughs> oh, my phone has been broken for about a week now. Ever since my daughter took me to my last doctor appointment. Oh, all these doctors. I swear they're the only time I go out anymore. Oh. You know, you spend all this money on these stupid little rectangles and they just crap out on you. I mean, look at this. Okay, let's see here, internet. And then you just click on that. Okay. Oh, here it is. It's right around here. Phyllis shows Ben her phone. She pulls up Safari and goes to type in the address bar, but she's on the emoji keyboard. Ben immediately knows how to fix it. My daughter had to download these stupid mojo faces. And now I have no keyboard. How am I supposed to type with a bunch of yellow faces? Well, actually, if, um, if you just... Hold a minute, press, though. It's my entire phone. Phyllis proceeds to open every app on her phone that has a keyboard to show that her whole phone is, in fact, broken. See here? Look at this. Mm -hmm. Facebook. I try to search for something or click to post the same thing. Now, now look. Oh, yeah. Right here, my messages. And then if you go to my email... Okay, it looks fine, right? But, but, but then, then look and when you try and reply, oh, more stupid yellow faces. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think if you just, um, if you just press this, this little button. phone wasn't a bajillion dollars, I'd throw it out the window. Oh, uh, it, well, if you just let me look. Ben pushes a single button and her normal keyboard is back. There you go. And now how in the hell did you do that? Well, it's just this little button right down here. See, your daughter downloaded the emoji keyboard on your phone. It, anyway, yeah, so there's this little button right here and you just uh, press that and it'll just change the keyboard back and forth. Well, how the hell did you figure that out? You know, that's what I hate about this phone. Nothing is labeled. How are people like me supposed to figure out how to use these things if they don't even tell you what the buttons do? Yeah, well, uh, I guess I just grew up with it, you know? But yeah, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. It's like, they just assume you know what all the buttons do. Exactly. Oh, you get it. Not like my daughter who says to me, come on, mom, it's easy. I swear they make it hard on purpose to make people like me look crazy. Crazy, Phyllis. Oh, well, maybe that makes us both crazy. Well, honey, thank you so much. I'm sorry for keeping you again like this with all my problems. Oh, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. And it's me and both my roommates here. So if you ever need help with anything, you can just knock or, or ring the buzzer. <laughs> it's still broken. But uh, we're happy to come help and get the door. You know, you were just so sweet, honey. I'm sure glad you moved here. All the other tenants are so rude. They never take time to talk to me. Well, I'm always here. <laughs> Thank you. Goes to her door, stops and turns back to Ben. So now, honey, do you drive? No, I fly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I drive. Oh, that's wonderful. So here's the thing. I get most of my groceries delivered, but they won't let me order my cigarettes for delivery. I know, I know, it's a terrible habit, but it's the only one I've gotten. I'm not giving it up. The next time you go out or maybe on your way back from school, could you stop at the store and pick me up some packs of Virginia Slims? Menthol. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Um, how many packs should I grab you? As many as they will sell you. 
Okay, <laughs> no problem. Uh, I've got class until four tomorrow, so I can just get them then on my way back. Oh, that's perfect, darling. Thank you. Do you pass the liquor store on 7th Street on your way to school? Um, I, I, I can. Uh, why? Oh, great. They sell the cigarettes there. And while you're there, you can pick me up a few more bottles of red. I'll call them and place the order, so all you have to do is pick it up. Sounds good. But open the bag and make sure the cigarettes are menthol. Do you know what they look like? You know what? Let me just grab the box. Sure. After several beats of Phyllis looking around. Here it is. Ha <laughs> ha. I can never remember where I put the stupid things. So here's what the box looks like. Make sure it's menthol. See the little green strip? Yep, uh, I see it. Okay, Virginia Slim's menthol. Alrighty. Well, uh, well, you have a good night, Phyllis. You too, sweetie. And thank you again. There's a special place in heaven for people like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good night, Phyllis. End scene. Scene five. Ben walks up to the front door of the building and finds Phyllis outside in a nightgown and house slippers. Good evening, Phyllis. Oh, hello, honey. <laughs> Coming in? Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, in a minute. Thank you, honey. What you doing outside? That couple was fighting again, giving me a horrible headache. I just stepped out for a cigarette and I just, uh, got carried away in thought, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope it was a nice thought. Well, take care, Phyllis. Ben starts to walk inside. Let me make you dinner. Um, right now? Oh, no, honey. It's too late for that now. But I want to make you dinner. What was it you said you liked? Was it meatballs? Chicken parm? That was it. When are you free? You must let me make it for you. Well, um, well, I don't have class on weekends, but uh, I do work until eight. Saturday? Is after eight gonna be a little late for you? Oh God, no, honey. What am I doing anyhow? Oh, um, are you sure? I mean, it's, I mean, it's very kind of you to offer, but you don't have to go through all the trouble to make me a whole meal. Oh, no, no, no. It's no trouble at all. Please let me cook for you, honey. It's been so long since I've had someone to cook for. My Harry used to eat everything. Oh, you know, you remind me of him sometimes. Oh, it would make me so happy to cook for someone who will enjoy my food. Oh, um, well, well um, Saturday works for me. Oh, goody, honey. And don't worry about making a thing. I'll bring it all. Do you like garlic bread? Oh, well, I mean, of course I love garlic bread. <laughs> then it's done. Are you sure you don't want me to make you anything? Um, I, I, I'm actually, I actually really love to bake. I can make dessert for us. Oh, what a treat. That sounds lovely, honey. I love to bake too. Maybe we should trade recipes sometime. <laughs> I have these marzipan rainbow cookies that my Caroline just oh, loves. Oh my God, I love, I love those rainbow cookies. Those are my favorite cookies ever. I'm not oh, kidding. You don't have to be nice about it, sweetie. I can make all kinds of stuff. Oh, no, 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 I'm serious. I love those cookies. I, I don't know what it is, but it's just something about them that makes them so warm and. And, and so sweet or something, I don't know. Just, my mom used to always pick them up from the bakery on holidays, she used to get them for me. <laughs> it's funny, cause you'd have the table full of desserts and then you just have the little 
little plate of rainbow cookies just for me. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet, honey. Your mother sounds like a very lovely woman. Ha, huh, must be to raise such a great son. You know what? We'll just have to make those cookies together sometime. The recipe card doesn't tell you all you need to know. Oh, well, okay, that sounds great. No, I love that. Listen, you just pick up the ingredients on your way home from work one day and we'll make them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should go lay down. I've been getting so tired in the daytime recently. I don't know what comes over me, but I just have to sleep it off. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me get you the door. Oh, I trained you well. Thanks, honey. Have a good night. You too, Phyllis. Phyllis and Ben walk inside the lobby together. End scene. Scene six. Ben enters with groceries. We see him stop by the mail, pick up his one letter, and then open Phyllis's mailbox and pull out a ton of mail, perhaps a phone book. As Ben collects the mail, we hear the end of his conversations with his mom on his cell phone. Yeah, well, I think it was rude of them too. No, they just live right over and they just drive her crazy. I don't know what it is. They just fight so much. It, but but she, it just gets her so upset. Yeah. Yeah, well, 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 I took a lesson from her and I actually called Bill about this. No, no, he actually, <laughs> well, she calls Bill all the time, but I figured if he's got another tenant complaining, he'll actually, you know, do something about them. Well, I'm still waiting to hear from him. He, I guess he hasn't returned my call, but I explained how loud they are and just, well, well, no, I actually never heard anything, but they're right above her apartment, so she gets a full show every night. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think it's the layout. Yeah, the, the bedrooms are in the back of the apartment. So it's, it, so it'd be pretty far from me to hear, just from my side. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, okay, I just, uh, I, got, I got some of our groceries I got to drop off. So let me hop off, okay? Oh, no, 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 it's not a big deal, mom. She just, she just gives me her card and I just do two transactions up front. <laughs> yeah, they love me at Stop and Shop. The, the only other stop I make is at the liquor store, and that's just on my way home. But you know, she just calls in the order, so I, all I got to do is just pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, two double bottles of bread and as many Virginia Slims as they have. <laughs> I know quite the order. Yeah. Yeah, and they know me, too. I mean, every time I walk in, they're like, Phyllis? <laughs> Yeah, it must be, must be quite the look for me. <laughs> yeah. All right, anyway, uh, let me just go ahead and uh, let you go. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Love you too, Mom. All right, bye. Hi, honey. Oh, goody. Were you able to get everything? Yep, took me a minute, but I found everything. And you got the flat chicken I told you about. Mm -hmm. Got the cut, got the cutlets just for you. Ah, oh, wonderful. I'd normally use breasts, but then I'd have to tenderize them. And I just don't have that kind of strength anymore. Not much for poor, not much for foreplay, huh? <laughs> well, look who's becoming a little smart ass. I knew you had it in you. <laughs> well, I'm learning from the best. <laughs> Careful, sweetie. Let's walk before we can run. And what about my smokes? Did they have the order ready or did they make you wait again? Well, well, get this. The liquor store didn't have the brand, so I just made a little pit stop at 7-Eleven and they had cartons. Ben pulls out a carton of Virginia Slims. Menthol? Menthol. Oh, sweetie. You're just the best. Thank you for making that other stop, honey. Oh, no, no problem at all. <laughs> I figured you'd like a little treat after all that, you know, crazy neighbor bullshit you've been dealing with. Oh, and I couldn't sleep last night thanks to, thanks to those assholes. This is, this is ridiculous. Again? You know, no, I called Bill this morning to tell him about how loud they've been. And what did he say? 
Well, it didn't answer, but I left a message. Oh, typical Bill. He has stopped answering my calls altogether. Are you serious? Typical men. Ugh. His husband was the same way. Selective hearing ran in his family. It makes you understand the screaming a little, but I still hate it. I understand how mad it can make you not to be heard. But really, move to your own house before you start screaming your head off. They really shouldn't make the neighbors have to listen to all their problems. Well, well, maybe there's somebody else we can call, like besides just making a noise complaint. I mean, if they're fighting as much as you hear, I feel like we should, you know, let someone know before, you know, just before things get any worse. Marriage is people's own private business. I wouldn't have wanted anyone to get between me and Harry. It was none of their concern. People need their space to yell. Ideally in their own home so they don't keep up half the neighborhood, but that's marriage. Well, it seems like you and Harry had a lot of great years. You know what? We did. And when we didn't, we kept it to ourselves. This generation doesn't do that. Nope, well, we just share it with all the world. Oh. Don't even get me started about that online shit. I don't have the mind to handle that nonsense. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, too much. Anyway, though, hon, come put those bags down before the milk spoils. Ben walks in and puts the bags down on the floor and the mail on her side table in the hallway. Need me to take any garbage on my way out? Garbage bag already in hand to give to Ben. Oh, sweetie, I don't know what I'd do without you. You're my only friend here. Oh, well, you're my only friend here, too. I mean, come on, the family in 2B would <laughs> never make me chicken farm for dinner. Oh, well, I'm glad to make it and glad to have the company. You're still good for Saturday at 8. Oh, yep, sure am. My roommates have rehearsal until late on Saturday, so it's just going to be us. Oh, well, more for us. All right, sweetie. I'll see you later then. And see you soon. Ben walks out of 1A with garbage and head towards the lobby door. Hello? Hi, yes, uh, this is Benjamin Kirk in 1B. Uh, thanks for giving me a call back. Mm -hmm. y y yeah, in, in 2A, the, the, the floor above me. Well, no, I haven't. I'm actually calling because of Phyllis Wilde in 1A. Um, so yeah, their bedroom is right above hers. And she's been telling me the, the other night just how they've been just keeping her up all night screaming at each other. Yeah, yeah, and she says it's been getting worse recently, and I, I guess I just want to make sure everything is okay. Wait, I'm sorry? Um, I'm okay. Uh, could it be coming from 3A? Okay, um, well, how long ago did they move? Oh, wow. Okay, um... Yeah, I guess I'll I guess I'll let her know. Uh, yeah. Well, well, thank you. End scene. Scene seven. Phyllis walks over to Ben's apartment door with a baking dish with a tinfoil cover in hand. She knocks on the door. Ben answers. Hey, Phyllis, uh, what's going on? Here, honey, take this. Gives Ben the baking dish. I just have to get back and get the salad. Oh, and the bread, too. I almost forgot. <laughs> um, um, wait, Phyllis? Go ahead and put the oven on at 375. The chicken needs to be heated up, and that'll be a good temperature for the bread, too. But, um... <laughs> I don't want to... You don't need to worry, honey. That's why I made the salad. We'll have that while we're waiting on this. Oh, well, Phyllis, what, what, what's going on? I, I, I thought we were saying we were doing this tomorrow. 
at eight when I get home? Eight? Well, that's way too late for dinner. Well, but that's when I get home, though. And what about tonight? Are we just going to starve? I made a lovely meal, so let's eat. Um, uh, okay, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Can we just do your place, though? My roommates are home, and they're, uh, they're doing a bit of a study night. Oh, of course. Come right in, honey. Go ahead and set that down on the stove. Wine's over there, hun. Pour me a glass, will ya? And don't be shy with the pour. I paid for it after all. Alrighty. And pour yourself whatever you like. There's white in the fridge if you'd prefer. Red is fine with me. <laughs> Go ahead and get the table set up. I'm just getting some spoons to serve the salad. I'll be right back, hun. Okay. Ben sits down at the dining table. Phyllis walks out of the kitchen with two plates and a bowl of salad. Okay, here we are. Phyllis places the plates down and then takes her seat. Phyllis raises her glass. Cheers. They clink glasses and sip. Phyllis begins serving up their salads. Well, thank you for this meal, Phyllis. It was a... Uh... It was very sweet of you to go all, all out like this. <laughs> oh, please. It's a salad. It's not even a seven-course meal. And don't thank me, hun. It's my pleasure cooking for us. Well, um, it's still more <laughs> than I usually do. So, um, was tomorrow no good for you anymore? What do you mean? Well, I thought we were going to do this tomorrow. You know, after I got back from work and all. Oh, no, 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 honey. I'm not eating dinner that late. And what? Were you planning on not eating or something tonight? No, no, I, I was just probably going to make something simple. Well, why do that when I spent all day making this? And you love my chicken parm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do love chicken parm. Oh, excited to try yours. I feel bad though because I, I I didn't bring anything. I was going to bake us some cupcakes for tonight. No, oh, yeah. I can't imagine you trying to bake. I don't mean to offend, but you should leave that to me. <laughs> okay. Oh no no no, honey. I'm sure your cupcakes would have been amazing, but you love my baking. And I have so many new recipes I want to try. Oh, like this new pie my girlfriend at the school was telling me about. It's sort of a pumpkin pie with the top of a pecan pie. Oh, I know you'll just love it. Mm, well, that sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. And I also made these strawberry cookies with the white chocolate chips the other week that were divine. Sorry I didn't save you any. They were just gone too quick. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> wow, with all this baking, you'll definitely be the favorite grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Not for some time, I hope. <laughs> well, I mean, within a few months, right? Isn't your daughter Caroline pregnant? <laughs> pregnant? Ah! Oh, that's a riot. She's just a little girl. How could Carrie be pregnant? God, sometimes you say such funny things. Huh. But you, you said she was married. <laughs> okay, okay. That's funny, but let's not wish for our girl to grow up too fast now. Um. What? What is going on with you tonight, Harry? No, I'm, I'm, I'm Ben. I'm <laughs> Ben. Okay, enough with all the jokes. Please, now. I want to enjoy our dinner. Phyllis? Well, what? Why do you have that look on your face? Phyllis. Phyllis, my name is, my name is Ben. I'm your neighbor. I, uh, well, <laughs> of course, dear, I know. Uh, are you okay, Phyllis? 
I, uh, I'm okay. Everything is okay. Uh, are you feeling tired? Do you, do you maybe want to lie down or? Oh, no, just... honey. I'm, I'm fine. I just, uh, <laughs> sometimes I get a little foggy brain is all. It's no big deal. Now, can you check the bread? It's probably almost done. Ben gets up to check the bread. Uh, looks like it still needs a few more minutes. Okay. Well, let's keep an eye on it. We don't want it to burn. Yeah, uh, I'll set a timer. Oh, and bring the wine to the table, honey. Top me off, would you? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> ben grabs the bottle of wine and joins Phyllis at the table. He fills up her glass and even pours himself some more. To neighbors. And to friends. <laughs> End scene. Scene eight. Yeah, and I'm just walking inside now. Mm -hmm. Well, no, actually. Uh, we did it last night. Yeah. Well, it was, it's actually kind of strange. Um, well, I dropped off her groceries, her groceries the other day, and I just thought we were all confirmed and set for, well, tonight. And then she just showed up at my door last night with all this food and was like, time to eat. <laughs> yeah, weird, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I had nothing going on anyway. Well, Danny and Rob were studying, though, so we had dinner at her place. Just like, so interesting. Like, it smelled like she had cats, but I, like, never saw one walk by. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, she was just kind of like, I don't know. It's just like some of the, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, some of the comments she made, uh, I guess, were, like, weird or, like, like, <laughs> like, forgetting that her own daughter was pregnant and that, what? No, 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 it's, it's. Well, it's not like that. I think it's just, well, you know, I think she just got confused. No, mom, no, no, it's not like Aunt Marsha. She's because she's like in her 60s or something. Like I have professors that are old, that are older than her. Well, no, I don't I don't know how she's been sleeping. Why? No, no, our, but Aunt Marsha was like old, old though. I mean, Phyllis taking a nap is not the same thing as Aunt Marsha forgetting to. Um, no, 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 it was, it was just, it was just the, the, well, yeah, just that one comment. Yeah, and the day early too, because, well, to be honest, we had a few days up in the air and I guess she just confused them. Yeah. No, no, she's, well, she's not all alone. I mean, she's got her daughter, Caroline, and. And well, I'm right across the hall. <laughs> well, I don't know, Mom. I, 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 I don't think I should call her. I mean, I've, I've, I've never spoken to her daughter before, let alone, you know. It, it, don't you think this is just kind of an overreaction? I mean, she, she cooked an entire meal. I mean, she could have done that if she was completely out of it. I mean, it was... It was just one comment and then the, the messing up the day. I don't really think I need to. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'll, I will call her and just, I'll just tell her what happened. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, I'll just, yeah, she should know. Well, I don't know, I'll figure it out. I'll just, I'll just maybe try to go on her phone book or something, okay. Okay, okay, love you too, mom. All right, talk to you soon. All right, bye. Good afternoon, Ben. Good afternoon, Phyllis. How are you feeling today? Oh, same as yesterday, same tomorrow. How are you doing, sweetie? I'm good, I'm good. Oh, honey, by the way, I... 
I made chicken parm yesterday for dinner. I made so much. I can't possibly finish it all. Would you like to take some for you and your roommates? Oh, yeah, yeah, but the chicken parm from our dinner last night? Mm -hmm. Well, the dinner that you made for us last night, right? You mean the chicken parm because we had it like <laughs> together last night when we had dinner? Yes, <laughs> that chicken parm. You didn't think I spent all morning making the same dish, did you? Just, just checking. <laughs> well, just come in and follow me to the kitchen. I'll get it for you right now. Oh, okay, great. They walk inside. Maybe I'm just used to cooking for a house full of people. But this morning I realized I'm never going to be able to finish all this before it goes bad. Huh. I don't know what I was thinking. Phyllis comes back to the hall with Tupperware in hand. At least you kids can enjoy it and it won't go to waste. Ah, thanks, Phyllis. Uh, well, dinner was great last night. Uh, I'm sure my roommates will love to try it. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh. You know, sometimes you remind me so much of Harry. Hmm. I miss him every day. Yeah, I I'm sure you do, Phyllis. Well, thank you again. Anytime, honey, anytime. <laughs> ben leaves and walks to his apartment. End of scene. Scene nine. Lights up on Phyllis, who is standing on the stoop of the building with a nightgown on and slippers. She holds a half-smoked cigarette in her hand, but her keys, lighter, and a few other pocket items of hers are around her on the ground. She stares off. Ben walks up to the door. Phyllis, good to see you. Hello. Do you need a light? Oh, uh, yes, I do. Ben picks up the lighter from the ground and lights Phyllis's cigarette for her. Thank you, sweetie. Welcome. Um, how are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm good. Just enjoying the evening. Yeah, um, well, how are you doing on cigarettes, by the way? Uh, do you need me to pick any of them up on, you know, more for you or? Oh, well, thank you, honey. I'm okay. The store is just right around the corner. Okay, well, you know, I, I pass the store on my way home every day, so uh, <laughs> never a problem. Such a kind young man you are. Thank you, honey. It's a little late, Phyllis. Uh, are you coming inside soon? Oh, don't worry. I'm almost done with it anyhow. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Have you heard how loud that couple is upstairs? They're always screaming at each other. Do they keep you up at night too? Oh, um, you've been hearing the neighbors again. So you hear them too. Oh. How annoying that you can hear them all the way on your side, too. I swear they have lungs of steel. They just scream and holler at each other all night. I can't take it. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're loud. <laughs> well, hey, Phyllis, um, have you tried knocking on their door and just, you know, talking to them face to face? They never answer the door. I've tried but they refuse to come to the door. They must be embarrassed or something. Yeah. Well, uh, why don't we just head inside, Phyllis? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm done now. Let's head in. Ben gathers up Phyllis's belongings from the ground and holds the door for Phyllis as she walks through. Okay. Oh, thank you. How nice of you to hold the door. I just need a suit and uh, maybe I'll make some tips. <laughs> yes, I need to start keeping singles on me. Oh, I like that one. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> Scene 10. 
Ben. Phyllis. I'm Ben. Oh, yes, yes, of course, honey, I know. Yeah. Um, so do you need me to uh, get your mail or are you just, uh, are you ready to head in? Oh, well, uh, I'm all set. Please, after you. Okay, I'm all ready. Uh, let's get you inside. Ben leads Phyllis to her door, opens it, and walks inside with her. Oh, thank you, honey, for seeing me inside, honey. Are you feeling okay, Phyllis? Yeah. I'm just a little tired. I've been so sleepy lately. Maybe I should lay down. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, well, let me just get out of your hair. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, Phyllis, uh, hey, um, you know those, those rainbow cookies you make? Of course, Caroline's favorite. Yeah, yeah, would you want to make them together sometime? Oh, yes, that sounds lovely. We can make them, honey. Yeah, great, great. Um, well, I can get the ingredients on my way back home from work tomorrow, if that's... Yeah, that that's sounds good. good. Let's bake tomorrow. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And, and you sure you want, you know, you want to... Oh, please, yes, help? let's make them. They'll be a lovely treat for little Carrie. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, Phyllis, um, can I see your phone? I just want to let Caroline know that we're, you know, we're making something special for her tomorrow. For sure. Here, just make sure to put it on the wire over there when you're done. I hate when it's dead in the morning. Ben takes Phyllis's phone and sends Caroline's contact info to himself. His phone dings. Great. Okay, so I, uh, I sent her number to me. I'll call her today and just, uh, let me just go plug your phone in. Oh, yes. Thank you, hon. Okay, then, sweetie. Why don't you come by tomorrow and we'll make them? I'll show you how to get the layers just right. I hate when there's too much filling. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. Okay, then, uh, Phyllis, um, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care. See you tomorrow, hon. <laughs> End scene. Scene 10. Ben enters the lobby with bags of groceries in hand. He walks to 1A and knocks on the door. Phyllis answers. Good afternoon, Phyllis. I got the cookies. I got the stuff for the cookies. And uh, did, you, did you still want to make them today or, or maybe another time uh, better for you? Uh, of course, honey. Let's make them. All right, great, great. Um, uh, do you need some time to, you know, did you want to want me to head over right now or? No, I'm ready. Let's go. Ben and Phyllis walk over to 1B and, set and enter. All right. Come on in. Make yourself comfortable. Phyllis sits down at the kitchen table. Uh, do, do you want me to, do you want anything to drink? Some water? Or... No, thanks. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, let me just uh, get my things uh, put away. Okay. Ben starts putting away his groceries. Phyllis, looking around and being quieter than normal, Ben notices. Is everything okay, Phyllis? How are you feeling? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, honey. I'm okay. I had a little headache earlier, and so I took a nap. I had just woken up when you knocked. I guess I'm still a little tired. Oh, oh, well, I'm, I'm so sorry. Did, did you want, do you want to just do this another time? Uh, we, we don't have to make these today. We can wait until, you know, you're feeling more up. I'm already later. up, hon. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Now, let's get going. These are going to take all day if we don't get started. And Jeopardy is on at seven. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Um, do you have the recipe card? I don't need it. Uh, I've been making these cookies for years now, honey. I could make them in my sleep. All right, great. All right. So what do we do first? Okay, hun. 
go ahead and turn the oven on at 350. Mm -hmm. Then we need a mixing bowl. What do you have? Um, well, I got this big metal one uh, we use for popcorn. Perfect. Hungry. Now, did you get the almond paste? Yep, I did. Uh, they only had uh, the seven ounce tube, so I just got two tubes. Seven ounces is perfectly fine, hun. Save the next two for the, the next time you make them. Okay, now we got to separate the eggs. Do you need me to show you how to do that? Oh, no, no. Um, I actually saw this trick online. Uh, you do it with a water bottle. What? A water bottle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It acts like a, like a suction thingy and it just sucks the yolk right out. Show me. Yeah, sure. Um, so how many eggs again? Four. Okay, cool. So let's just crack into the bowl. Then uh, we just need another bowl. Then you just kind of... Uh... Ben places the bottle over the bowl and squeezes. A yolk suctions up into the bottle. And then you squeeze it into the bowl. And just do that to all of them. Oh, look at that! I've never seen that before. It makes it so much easier. Yeah, and, and less of a mess too. I know. I usually let them run through my hands, but then they are a mess. And you gotta turn to the sink and touch the soap and... Right, no, salmonella everywhere. <laughs> it's like you have to scrub the whole kitchen down after you're done. <laughs> oh, that must be the oven done preheating. All right, sweetie. Let's add the sugar and butter to the bowl um, so we- No, no, it's just, uh, that's not even the oven, that's- uh... Stop. Is it an alarm clock? Maybe one of your roommates. No, no, no. We just use our phones for, for alarm clocks. Oh. Ben searches around for the source of the noise. After he can't find it, he opens up the door to the hall. Ben realizes. What, what, where are your keys? Why? What's going on? Phyllis, 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 I need your keys right now. They're right here. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Ben snatches the keys and runs out to the door to 1A. He opens the door and some smoke spills out into the lobby. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. Phyllis, Phyllis, call 911. Call 911, there's a fire. Phyllis, 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 are you calling them? Ben runs out into the lobby. Ben grabs the fire extinguisher and runs back to 1A. Shit, 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 shit. Okay, okay, what the fuck do I do? Um, 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 oh shit, shit, shit. Okay, pull, pull this and squeeze, okay. White extinguisher smoke starts spraying out as Ben walks into the apartment. Okay, it works, okay, shit, 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 shit. Ben walks further into the apartment. Did you call 911? <laughs> Ben walks back out to Phyllis. Did you call 911? Okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, the fire's out. Okay, but Phyllis, um, it doesn't look very pretty. So, so uh, I'm just going to call Bill and have him come over and just check out the damages, okay? Just make sure everything is okay. But I'm not... No, no, hey, 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 hey. It's, it's okay, it's okay, Phyllis, it's okay, no, no one is hurt. We're just gonna have some people come and just check everything out. It's going to be all right, okay? But, but how, how could, what, okay, what it's, uh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, what, um, what time did you have your cigarette today, Phyllis? I, uh, I, I don't think. Did, 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 did you smoke your cigarette before you came over today? I could have, I always, but I'm sure I would have. No, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Phyllis, accidents happen, Phyllis, okay? It's, let's just, let, let me get you some water. Ben starts pouring Phyllis a glass of water. I'm scared, Ben. I know, I know, but, but we're going to be okay, all right? 
Now, um, all right, so you relax. I'm just going to call Bill. Just sit tight, relax, and, and I'll be right back, okay? Ben walks out to the stoop and sits down. After a few beats and him holding his phone, Ben makes a call. After a few rings. Hello? Um, hi. Hi, is this, um, is this Caroline Wild? Oh, all right, well then, um, can you, can you put your phone, uh, can you put your mom on the phone, sweetie? End play. <laughs>